Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanaliza Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have another match, exhibition match between Dyth and King Lunchbox on Red Comet. Dyth going for rovers, King Lunchbox going for hovercraft. Oh, really? Cool. I haven't seen hovercraft in, on Red Comet in a long time. This would be neat. So yeah, King Lunchbox going for hovercraft, and Dyth going for rovers, which is more typical. Rovers are, I mean, you always see rovers in Red Comet. Flat map. Larger map. You're gonna see rovers. It just happens. But yeah, King Lunchbox going for the hovercraft. Or at least going for a quill. Presumably they're going to build other units, but for now it's just the quill. And King Lunchbox's commander. I... Okay. I mean, the thing is is that you... I kind of see why, because you want to prioritize economy. But that's what the priority system is for. So, you don't have to do it by just not building stuff. But sure. Whatever works. As long as King Lunchbox doesn't excess metal, they should be fine. But the problem, of course, is there are Scorchers coming into their base, and those Scorchers are going to be destroying a lot of things. Now, granted, I can kind of understand, because unless you have, like, a half dozen daggers, you can't do a whole lot of work with Hovercraft. But you also need to start building the daggers at some point. Unless you're just going to go straight for scalpels. Which, maybe? Or maces? No, nope, going for daggers. Okay, so King Lunchbox just wanted to set up their economy as quickly and solidly as possible. Which, as we can see from Dyth's side, you don't have to sacrifice production to do. I mean, King Lunchbox actually has a lot of metal in storage, so they'll be absolutely fine when it comes to building things up. At the same time, they do have to be careful, because again, daggers kind of have to work in groups. As in, they absolutely have to work in groups. Like Scorcher, you need to have five daggers to one-shot a Scorcher, and you kind of need to one-shot a Scorcher if you want to actually beat the Scorcher. Or you just go next to a Lotus, that works too. So, King Lunchbox, they are going heavy on the daggers. Clearly using that as a bit of a raiding force. I'm not sure how they're planning on doing that, if they're planning on having all the daggers coming together, because, again, that's kind of necessary in order to actually have them do anything useful. But it should... We'll, we'll see what happens. I feel like the daggers are going to be moderately useful in a small group like this. Like, they're going to be able to at least deal some damage. But you want one more, because... Metal extractors are 400 metal, or 400, damn, or, yeah, 400 HP. They're 400 HP, they're 75 metal. They're 400 HP, daggers deal 100 damage a shot. So it would make a lot of sense to go in with the daggers with four at a time instead of three at a time. But alas, we see only three. That is going to be a problem. Like, it's just going to make it harder to take care of everything. Like, that is the thing with Hovercraft. You really have to be careful with the amount of daggers you send in, because you want to make sure you're sending enough that you can basically one-shot everything. And that is not how many we have here. We have three. They can't one-shot a thing, and as a result, they are going to be destroyed utterly without being able to do all that much damage. In fact, you kind of want to send spares, just in case a couple get destroyed, because daggers are also glass cannons. So unfortunately, King Lunchbox did not manage to actually do all that much damage. They just lost a bunch of daggers and donated some metal. And daggers, that's... Eh, 32 metal each. They donated about 100 metal. Not the best move. Not gonna lie. At the same time, Dyth has been expanding quite a bit. They have the entire western side of the map. They're starting to get that center area as well. King Lunchbox in their hand. They have the southeast. They have their main base. And that is it. They are completely bare on the rest of the map. They have no idea what's going on in the rest of the map other than what their radar can see, which quite frankly isn't that much. Like, they can see like a third of the map, maybe. So they aren't really doing all that well as far as information. On the other hand, they do have maces. The maces are going to be quite effective against this force. Now, I expect we're going to be seeing some changes in production. No, we're not. Still going to be Scorcher Dart. Now, granted, Scorchers are very mobile, so it may not even matter, but still, Scorcher Dart is not going to work well against maces if the maces are actually able to get close enough. Though, to be fair, that's not happening. The Scorcher is getting trapped. Oh, that has got to suck. Unfortunately, getting stuck in between the Metal Extractor and the Solar Collector and getting ripped apart by a Lotus. So, fortunately for King Lunchbox, their base was built in such a way that it made the Scorchers have a hard time getting around, which admittedly is kind of what you want from these Solar Walls. I mean, the reason you build things like this is so that you don't have to worry about forces getting in and just wreaking havoc in the backside of your base. So it works! I mean, good job, King Lunchbox. You set that up well. Unfortunately for King Lunchbox, Dyth does still have a stronger economy. Maybe not a stronger energy economy, but still a stronger metal economy. And on the other hand, on King Lunchbox, they have the one caretaker. Dyth has 
enough for characters coming in. Dice's main problem is lack of energy economy, really. Build E! Build energy! That's what you need. You need icons as widget. Just tells you. Build E in chat whenever you're low in energy. Of course, that being said, King Lunchbox, again, they're not that far ahead in terms of metal or behind. It's kind of, it's pretty much a dead heat right now. So, going forward, it's going to be a matter of whether or not King Lunchbox is able to put the maces in the right spot. Those are the main assets coming in there. If King Lunchbox can position them properly relative to dice forces, that'll work. But dice, switching over to Ravagers, a good choice. I don't know if I'd necessarily go for that. I mean, maces are still a strong force, and... Mace Halberd actually is going to be doing reasonably well against Ravagers. Like, not, like, killing them outright, but it's going to be a relatively even fight. Fortunately, it looks like the attention has been diverted. I mean, I like the Stardust here, making sure that Dice can't really get in with the Scorchers. But it's more King Lunchbox does not have both Maces near the Ravagers. The Ravagers are finding that Maces are a little bit of a difficult target to deal with, but thankfully for the Ravagers, their speed is allowing them to close the distance. Notice there that the mace was able to dodge a little bit early on, but the Ravager getting way too close for the mace to actually be able to dodge it much longer. In the giant frame, on top of the fact that it's, you know, slower, it makes things a little bit difficult. And that, is that being paid attention to? Because I don't see that King Lunchbox expected that was going to live. Like, that mace was dead. But again, the Halberds coming in here, that's going to be way more useful. They'll tank the shots from the Ravagers, they'll be able to get around and deal some extra damage around the side, just flank them out. And then the maces can go in and deal the main chunk of the damage. These, wait. Okay, these are not going to be in tank mode. So they are just for damage, because they are not closed up. They're, they are attacking at will. Yeah, think about maces, you, or halberds rather, you want to make sure the fire state is not fire at will if you want to have them do the tanking. I mean, if you don't care, then it's fine. But the main reason you build halberds is because they're tanky. Although, to be fair, 240 metal for, for the damage they deal is like... Yeah, that's actually not bad, all things considered. I mean, they're a pretty good tank in their own right, even if you are having fire at will. And that's clearly how King Lunchbox is playing this. They don't even care about the defensive element. They want raiders. And that's actually working quite nicely. King Lunchbox, what do you have for construction? You don't have more caretakers, though. And the quills aren't really doing much either. That's a bit of a shame. Now, to be fair, Dyth is actually having to play catch-up, to be honest. Like, they're... Running around the map, trying to get every, trying to get these halberds taken care of, and that's going to be a bit of a problem. Like, this halberd mace combo is surprisingly effective. Not to mention, yeah, okay, they're, they're at fire at will, but they have to be close up. And they can still close the distance, even if they're not, even if they're on fire at will. So yeah, this is a, this is working out nicely. Of course, the Ravagers coming in here. One of them will die. The second one might die. The halberds are not in position to help out, and without the mace dealing extra damage. The Halberds will have a bit of a tough time. But they don't care. They just want the Metal Extractors. They're not even going for anything else. Just take out the Metal Extractors. Focus on nothing else. That is a very effective raid coming in here from King Lunchbox. Like this, this set of Halberds is absolutely wrecking up the place. Get rid of a few more Caretakers, and that should do it. Oh, if they could get rid of the more Caretakers, though, but they're not able to do so. One of the Halberds is going to go down. The other one not able to get rid of the rest of the base, but still, getting rid of more and more metal extractors is a useful tool. Because every metal extractor dead is more production that's not happening. Or slows down production at the very least a little bit here and there. Or is that halberd at the same time is being supported by a bunch of halberds and maces over in the center of the map, doing a real, real decent job of pushing back all the fencers, but I kind of wish they would go in and use that to start wiping out all the naked expansions in the north side of the map. Because that first halberd did a really good job, but these second halberds are being much better countered. The fencers are, are able to actually start getting rid of them. The maces obviously can't get to the fencers because the fencers just outrange them massively. That's why I was hoping that the maces would decide to go over and take out these northern naked expansions. I mean, before the fencers had a chance to catch up and wipe them out. But then again, that mace is still able to take care of the northern naked expansions. But those naked expansions are being done as a way of compensating for everything that was lost in the southwest side of the base, which is also being rebuilt. But hey, that mason is gone. That's the key thing. Now these expansions can be destroyed without being rebuilt quickly. So this mace can go over here and start wiping all the metal extractors. That'll slow down the economy. King Lunchbox still able to build up a lot of units. But the question is whether or not they're able to maintain their own expansions, which, again, it's not quite as widespread. Dyth still is expanding a lot more aggressively than King Lunchbox. And that is paying off. 
I mean, King Lunchbox is raiding well, but unfortunately, it's just not enough when you consider that Dite still has the Mason, the second Mason there. They still have a lot of reclaim they can work with. They still have boatloads of caretakers. King Lunchbox now just has a second. Like, they need five caretakers, or sorry, four caretakers. Might want five, actually, for the reclaim as well, but two is not enough. They have 40 metal per second coming in. They're only spending 30 in the factory. And they're spending some here and there, but it's not nearly enough. And when you know, units go between things, it doesn't quite work as effectively. And you just want all that metal in the factory, especially when you have this much metal to spare. You can build another caretaker. It's fine. You're not going to run out of metal. You are going to run out of game, though, if you're not able to defend against these forces coming in. And I think King Lunchbox is probably going to go down. Dice just has out eco them completely. Ken, I really like the use of the Halberd and Mace. I, I'm actually kind of impressed by how much the Halberd was able to do when it was on fire at will. But I, at the same time, can't see how King Lunchbox expected to actually do any real damage without putting as much economy as they could into their factory. They accessed a lot more than they really needed to. And they had a, they had a window in the middle of the game where Dyth was going to be about the same production value and King Lunchbox could have set up a couple more caretakers, and that would have given King Lunchbox a huge advantage when it came to production. But that didn't happen. So yeah, I really kind of wish that King Lunchbox had decided to just build up more infrastructure for production. But I do like the the strategy they went with. Like, I do like the unit choice. I think that was really smart. Although I do kind of wish they would put some of the halberds onto fire and return fire or hold fire just so that they could block off the fencers and let the maces get in there and let the maces deal all the damage. That would be very effective. But I think at this point, King Lunchbox, they've just given up. Like, I'm not sure what they're trying to do. They're upgrading their commander, but if you look at their actual mouse position right now, it's basically desperately trying to build up in their base, trying to rebuild. I don't think they realize that Dyth has a massively more powerful army than they do. And it really is just a matter of time. I mean, King Lunchbox... Yeah, they've, they're going to lose the fusion plant. They're going to lose the Stardust. But Dyth did lose a lot. Dyth did take a lot of damage from the Halberds. I just... Just kind of wish that King Lunchbox had just that little bit of extra production going forward. It would have made a huge difference. So... King Lunchbox, are you... There's the GG. And there's the towel throw. Took a little while, but King Lunchbox throws in the towel, and we have... I just want to double check here. What was the metal excess? Oh, man. Dyth actually accessed quite a lot more than King Lunchbox did. So, never mind. King Lunchbox's army value also actually exceeded Dyth considerably. As did value killed. Like, King Lunchbox had this mid-game section where they were in a really good position. But unfortunately, they just did not capitalize, and yeah, that made things a bit of a problem. Like, really, is that section, that attack in the south in the middle of the game that did a lot of damage. And if that had been able to take out the commander, or if that, like, there was enough force to take out the commander, or take out the caretakers in the main base, then it might have been a very different story. But yeah, Dyth having the higher metal income, meaning King Lunchbox was always playing catch-up, even when it came to the raiding. So yeah, King Lunchbox was very efficient, but they had to be just to stay on par. Not to win, just to stay even. Just to not lose. Which is what ended up happening. So yeah, it only went so far. So King Lunchbox would have been better to expand a little bit more, and if they had just expanded a little bit more, put more caretakers on their factory, got their production a little bit faster, and I mean, they had to. So folks on raiding the north as well as the south, which is more of a multitasking thing, like an APM thing, and that takes some getting used to. But that's, that's what it is. So, yeah, we're going to be going to one last game, and it'll be a match between Kingstad and Atostic on Trojan Hills. Which I'm curious how this is going to work out, because both these players are quite strong, but I haven't seen, haven't seen them play in a while. So, yeah, we'll be back with that in a couple minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs> 